So whether or not you live on the east coast of the United States, chances are you've heard about the Zakata invasion. The invasion is over now, but it made a lot of headlines while it was happening. The invasion of Brood X. As a photographer and an insect enthusiast, photographing these little guys was a lot of fun for me. If you don't like insects, however, this might not be the video for you. Anyways, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm a photographer living in the Washington DC area, but a little bit further from DC than in my last videos because I recently just moved and I moved a little further out into the suburbs, the Maryland suburbs. So regarding cicadas, there is a species of periodical cicada that emerges in massive numbers every 17 years and lives a short life cycle above ground before mating and dying off. The brood that emerged this year was called Brood X. I had vivid memories of these cicadas from the last time they emerged, back in 2004. At that time, I was actually a middle schooler living in Maryland and I was fascinated by these insects that came out in the millions. But this was long before I even had my first camera. During my recent move, the cicadas were coming out in full force. Most of my camera gear was packed up already, but I left out my main camera and my 100mm f2.8 macro lens. The extension tubes that I have were all packed up, but the cicadas, they're not that small, so using just this lens by itself was pretty sufficient to get, you know, adequate shots. So in my area, I noticed that most of the nymphs emerged right around dusk. I took frequent evening walks, mostly with my phone, but occasionally with my camera. And I watched as they climbed up the trees and found a place to molt, which basically means shedding their skins to transition into becoming a recognizable adult cicada. Some trees were filled with molting cicadas, while other trees were completely bare. It's easy to make this cicada invasion look completely terrifying, but the reality is that it was very regional. Certain areas were saturated with them, while other areas didn't have too many. So being a photographer, I of course decided that it would be a great idea to collect some of the emerging nymphs and leave them on a blueberry bush on my balcony. That way I could set up my camera and make some time lapses of them hatching. This, however, was easier said than done. The cicadas never really wanted to hatch where I wanted them to. You know, where the lighting was perfect, or where the leaves were out of the way, where my camera's views were unobstructed. The second issue I had was just pure bad luck. I often set up the camera, focused on one cicada that was in a nice position, and then took several thousand photos to create a time lapse, only to realize that the cicada I focused on never hatched. But every other cicada did. There was no opportunity to do another time lapse in the same night because all of them hatched at the same time for the most part. So ultimately I attempted these time lapses for about three or four different nights with about two successes and two failures. Again, for these time lapses I used my Canon 100mm f2.8. To create these time lapses I took photos at about 20 to 30 second intervals until the cicadas had hatched. For the first time lapse, which would have been my best one, I should have left the camera running longer. Adult cicadas were the easiest to photograph, since they were active during the day and easy to position anywhere. In my ideal world, I would have loved to photograph the cicadas all around Washington DC on historic buildings to kind of like document the, you know, the invasion of DC but being in the middle of a move, I was only able to really focus on the invasion in my, you know, local neighborhood. After my move, I noticed that I had very few cicadas in my new backyard. Surprising, since I live next to a giant forest. But part of this invasion was definitely regional and my new neighborhood just wasn't a cicada hotspot. But the other part of it was the fact that my house came with a lot of local residents who had already claimed their territories and on their menu, cicada. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. My new backyard had more cicada remains than live cicadas. 
So naturally, my focus shifted, and instead of photographing cicadas, I started photographing chipmunks. And as I'm filming this video, there's a little chipmunk trying to climb up my leg, actually. But more on that in a future video. They are so distracting. I can't really get outside and film a video because now I have um, chipmunks just all around me, climbing on me as I'm trying to film a video. Um, yeah, I kind of tamed them. Anyway, let me know in the comments below, did you experience this year's Brood X invasion? And if so, were you taking photos or taking cover? If you like cicadas as much as I do, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you are new here. You can probably already guess what some future videos are gonna be about. That's it for today. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. So this little guy, Chippy, well, I feel like everybody has a chipmunk named Chippy. Chippy lives under my porch. <laughs>